In the United States Army, the MOS of a 92 Gulf is a culinary specialist, otherwise referred to as a cook. Now before we dive into this brief summary, maybe think about hitting that subscribe button, also enable notifications so that you can join the notification platoon and get notified as soon as new videos go live, including live streams. All right, so let's dive into this and help you understand some of the job duties of a 92 Gulf. The job duties of a culinary specialist in the United States Army are going to include things like preparing food based on Army recipes, operating and maintaining field kitchen equipment, as well as other operations inside of an Army dining facility. This MOS is available for all aspects, including active duty, National Guard, and reserves. Now to get you into the Army, you are going to have to have a high school diploma or a GED, as well as take the ASVAB and get a qualifying AFQT score to qualify for the United States Army. But specifically to qualify for a culinary specialist in the United States Army, there is a specific score you're going to need on the ASVAB as you are going to need to at least score an 85 on the operation and food section of the ASVAB. Now the operation and food section score comes from four subjects in the ASVAB. Now those subjects are going to include word knowledge, paragraph comprehension, auto and shop, and mechanical comprehension. The training for this MOS will include the normal 10 weeks of basic training and then from there a soldier will move on to AIT at Fort Lee, Virginia for nine weeks. Now this is an MOS that does get a lot of you know criticism, a lot of flack made fun of in the United States Army. There's probably even comments down in the comment section making fun of this MOS, but the reality is, is these individuals work some really crazy hours. Because the way you have to look at it is these individuals are responsible for making breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that means they have to be in that dining facility prior to breakfast. That may mean being there at like four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, whatever it takes to get there in enough time to be able to prepare for breakfast chow. And on the other end of that, that means they have to be there after dinner chow to start tearing down, clean up, and all that kind of fun stuff. The dining facilities are open on weekends and holidays, so that also means these individuals are working weekends and holidays. So this isn't your typical job where you're gonna be working just simply doing 6.30 PT and then getting off at 4.35. You're probably gonna have some crazy hours, maybe some shift work. There are some situations where they kind of break up the shifts where maybe you come in at 04 in the morning until like noon and then some other crew comes in at noon all the way up until after dinner chow and they have it broken up into two different shifts. But I've also heard some stories where units don't do that and you're just simply working the entire day. In my experience, some of the cooks that I knew, they had like split shift kind of a thing, but I've also heard from some that didn't have that option when they were at a specific duty station or a specific unit. Now, a lot of the chow halls like in Garrison have a lot of civilians that work there too, so there's a good chance you'd be working with civilians. They may be helping you cook the food, prepare the food, the cleanup, and all that kind of process. So it is a lot of times a combination of civilians working inside the defect as well as military soldiers, and that's even the case when you're deployed to a combat zone. As I remember, like in Iraq, there was Civilians from like India, I believe it was, they were working with some of our cooks, they were working in that dining facility. But when it comes to like the field, that's usually just primarily the uh, soldiers that will do this, they'll set up like a field kitchen, and they usually prepare breakfast and dinner, and then, you know, lunch is kind of on your own, you're kind of stuck with MREs for that, but usually those cooks are preparing breakfast and dinner. But in the field, they are also preparing mermites, is what they're called. They're basically these tubs of food that go out onto log packs to get taken out to other individuals that are not at the main area where the cooks are at. So they have to prepare food for those individuals at the main area of the training area, but also these kind of to-go food kind of containers that get taken out to some of the units that are you know, spread out for other training uh, situations. Now, while in the Army, there is the opportunity for a lot of different kind of uh, specialties or certificates to earn in this MOS to help you transfer over into the civilian world as a cook. So if you're someone who likes to prepare food, who likes to cook, and maybe wants to eventually pursue a career outside of the army as a civilian cook, maybe have your own restaurant, whatever, then this could be a great MOS to get into as you do get a lot of certificates, or you can get a lot of certificates, plus that experience in the army as being a cook helps you transfer over into the civilian side as a culinary specialist, as a cook in the civilian side. So if any of my viewers watching this are currently 92 golfs in the United States Army, or maybe you were previously a culinary specialist in the United States Army, leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear what you liked about the MOS, what you didn't like about the MOS, maybe help out some of those future individuals that are interested in this MOS. If you have a specific MOS that you are interested in learning about, make sure to leave those in the comments as well, as I do like to look at the comments to get some inspiration for some future MOS Monday episodes. So that's going to do it for this episode. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to check out some of the links down in the description for social media and more, as well as some recommended videos over here, including the playlist for previous MOS Monday episodes. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos, and I'll see you next time. See ya.